So we are using technology to simply monitor and control production, delivery, product, and services. The so production, delivery, products, services. So these are all the, all of our needs. Now we have to product something. We have to deliver something. Uh, so production and delivery of products and services, both. So product means it may be a. So here also I have used the word production. Here there is a word product. So the difference is what what is the what is a product means? Say for example, if you are manufacturing a car, it's a product. If you are manufacturing a phone, it's a product. Service means say you are receiving electricity or transport. It's a service, no? So for the production and delivery of these products and services, we use technology. So if there is no technology, what will we do? So actually, what automation means is for this purpose, for the pro, for, for monitoring and control of the production de and delivery of the production services, we replace human by technology. Right. So that's the definition I took from this source, International Society of Automation. The definition they gave for uh, in, uh, automation. But simply can give another definition. So making or performing the process with no or less human interaction. That's what I told you, no? We reduce or remove the human interaction with the process. Uh, what is a process? Process is something which we done to get whatever the product or service is, right? Basically, I'm not getting into, de getting into detail to the definition of process. Simply a process is whatever the things we do to achieve some goals or so some products or service. That making or performing the process with no or less human interaction. So this is a simple definition I have given. So the thing is, so you should, you can memorize or you can remember with this definition. But if you understand the concept, you can tell that on your own language. But you don't have to go with these sentences. Okay, so there are many types of automation, right? That means, right. Oh. Now we will see how this automation evolved because we now only we are using this automated stuff. Right? Okay, I will keep this one somewhere here. Right. But early days we didn't do that. So from this picture, I'm not getting into detail, I'm just giving the idea. So uh, so, so actually it uh, actually it uh, uh, denotes the evolution of the industry, not, not just automation, it shows talks about the how industries were evolved with the evolution of humans. So actually, this is considered to be the beginning of the human so 20 million years ago. So first they say, first they were first mankind before 20 million years ago. And after, for a very long time, people were doing stuff with, like st they, all the tasks manually. Right. People were doing their tasks manually they started to use some mechanical stuff like pulleys, chains, around like this period, like 1784 or 1780s. People started to use that started to use mechanical stuffs like pulleys, chains, even mainly the industry 1.0, or sometimes it is called industrial revolution or first industrial revolution. Sometimes it is called. So the first industrial revolution is the invention of steam engine. So after the invention of steam engine, there is a rapid growth in the industry. Right. So that's a, that's also a mechanical. Yeah. So, so mainly industry 1.0 completely mechanical and manual. Then after the invention of electricity and mass production, electricity. In the second industrial revolution or in industry 2.0, electricity is coming to play. So when electricity is invented, then the motors came, came to play. So then again, it brought a revolution in the industries. Then industry 3.0, 
is electrons and it automation so from industry 3.0 itself we are talking about automation so they are only electronics started to impact the industry so when start uh, when electronics and it started to impact the automation we got we went for automation but even in the electrical like industry 2.0 also we had some automated plants up to some extent but for a fully automated plant they were started to use in industry 3.0 after the third industrial revolution industry 4.0 is the current stage that means we are still in that state actually we are going to achieve because still this this is not completely achieved so in the industry 4.0 the major factors are internet of things and also artificial intelligence it was not mentioned here mainly artificial intelligence so what is internet of things have you heard about it as i told you earlier so automation evolution so initially industry 1.0 is manual and mechanical systems then we came for industry 2.0 where electromechanical system we used switches sensors relays so we had some relay based automated system so we used switches sensors relays and actuators were used to automate the process but we cannot automate completely or they had some drawbacks with them but with the mechatronic system so that means the industry 3.0 that means when electronics started to impact the industries then only mechatronic evolved that means mechatronic combined all the other disciplines like electrical mechanical and it all the stuff so that's what third industrial revolution or industry 3.0 where electronics it networking and communication technologies expanded the scope of automation that's what i mean. then industry 4.0 is still in progress so main factors there are internet of things and artificial intelligence so what is internet of things have you heard about it is internet normally internet is the network of computers right normally so how do we access the internet or data in the what do we do with internet is we access the data in some other computers that's what that's the use of internet right? so if you are accessing a particular website all the data in that website are stored on a server or a computer so through internet you are accessing that basically it's a network of computer now internet of things means similar to the internet all the things are going to be interconnected all the things whatever the things or device or stuff we use are going to be connected together and the second is artificial intelligence so making our decision so as i told you already we are we were talking about automation right so automation is something which we try and or we make a system to do a assigned task automatically right but uh, it will not make a, any of its own decision say for example if you Say if we go for a simple automated system, very basic example, it's an automated door. When you see, whenever you walk through malls or buildings, you may uh, see that, right? So when you approach the door, it will be opened, and when you pass it, it will be closed. It's an automated system, but there, it doesn't actually. It is programmed such that right? it's programmed such that when a person approaches it, it will be open, but it will not work beyond that. But artificial intelligence means actually we try and or we program the system to make its own decision based on the data it collects. So like we do. So how we do? How do we make decisions based on the information on data we have? Similar to that. I'm not getting in the detail, but I'm just introducing. So this is where now industry is going towards industry 4.0. what are the advantage why do we need automation so you can read this here so definitely automated systems are going systems are going to be faster and 
they will reduce labor cost right why so when we uh, appoint a person for an automated task we have to pay him but in case of an automated system we don't need his assistance and it will become it, it will be a safe safety because safety is ensured in many ways one is when we reduce the number of people inside the factory itself it reduces the possibility of safety and also when we make the system automated we also make sure that all the safety measures are taken and it makes the task ease and also compared to human it automated systems are very efficient and they are in their precision but the disadvantages are these two initial and r and d costs say so still they they reduce the labor cost but on the other hand to build that plant or to do a, a research and development of your plant so you have a plant and you are making a team to make a research and decisions to change it to a completely automated plant means then you have to invest so that investment is going to be high and also to design the system of in in also in some cases for maintaining the system you may need to require skilled personnel say for a normal like for a for a maintenance you cannot use a person who doesn't have the technical understanding of the system which is designed even still in sri lanka most of the automated plants for maintenance say for small maintenance they use their staffs but after some extent they what they will do is they have to go for the organization which is designed and implemented that system microprocessor is a single very large scale integration chip that contains many digital circuits that perform arithmetic logic communication and control functions so basically it's an ic In integrated circuit but it's a very large scale integration chip that contains many digital circuits which can con- perform many tasks like arithmetic logic communication and control functions but uh, i'm just giving the introduction but if we when we learn microprocessor learn in detail if we learn i will teach about it it's a microprocessor so for your understanding i can say Say, inter- yeah, say when you have a PC or laptop, you will have a CPU, right? Central processing unit. That is the that is a microprocessor. So you know what is the use of the CPU on your computer or in your laptop or even in your phone, right? What is microcontroller? So microcontroller is an integration of microprocessor or central processing unit with memory for programming and data storage input output ports with a to d and d to e that means analog to digital and digital to analog conversion capabilities and communication ports so i told you that microprocessor can do some arithmetic or logical tasks but you have to give some program or some control commands to the microprocessor so you should integrate that micro say if you want to use a microprocessor you should integrate it with the system right for that purpose you have to use many types of memories to store data and also you have to create the interfaces to get connected with external devices and also that that actually when we use in the real world in the real world most of the signals or the or most of the physical variables are analog right you know what analog means how clear analog signal so they continuously change their value changes with the time they don't have rigid value so they, their values are changing over the time but uh, in case of a microprocessor it works with digital signals only say digital signal means actually only two states like on no off or zero one now it will have only two discrete values so it cannot directly deal with analog system so to connect the real world with a microprocessor you need an analog to digital conversion option and also when if the microprocessor want to communicate or send something back to real world again you need a digital to analog conversion so 
so what we are what we are doing is we are integrating all these stuff like nlp to digital or digital to analog conversion conversion and also communication ports to communicate with the with other microprocessor or any other devices and also to send the data from many devices and also to giving the interface and memory for storing the data and program for this purpose all these parts were get integrated with the microprocessor that's what is a micro that is what a microcontroller or simply a computer so what, what what is your computer so in your computer you have a cpu central processing unit or in your laptop or in your phone also you have a cpu that's the one is going to do all or it's going to control all the function and uh, works of your phone or laptop or pc but to work to work actually it but we don't have just a microprocessor we have lots of components with it right memory like many types of memory ram ram rom for many purposes and also we have other elements like to connect other devices say with your lab computer means if you want to connect a keyboard you have a communication port like usb or if you want to connect an audio device you have a port for that everything is going to at the end everything is going to communicate with microprocessor but before that we we are building an interface for all these purposes as i told you for a digital conversion communication with external devices so integration of microprocessor or cpu with central processing unit with all these purposes like for programming and data storage input output ports analog to digital or digital to analog conversion capabilities and communication this is what a microcontroller or a computer so you uh, simply it's a computer sometimes microcontroller is defined as microcomputer or computer so this is how we control a process with a microcontroller right so microcontroller which will say this is our process we are going to control using a microcontroller internally we will have a cp right i told you already so we will have microprocessor already inside if a microcontroller means it's an integrated circuit with a microprocessor so to to communicate with or to get the data from the external environment or from the process we use sensors from the sensor we get the data the microcontroller gets some data based on that data and also the program so that it gets some data from here and also it will have a program or instruction based on this data and program controller is going to send some control signals or commands to the actuator the actuator will control the process okay so this is how a basic automated system works so this is how a control system automated control system is going to look like so what an actuator can basically not for understanding all i am saying you can say it will convert electrical signal to a physical signal like mechanical energy or something for example say for motor when you give electrical energy it converts it to uh, sorry when you give electrical energy it converts it to mechanical energy so for say for example if you have an automated door you are automating your door with a microcontroller and you are using a sensor proximity sensor so when a person comes the proximity sensor detects the person and and it gives the electric on signal to the microcontroller so microcontroller will turn on the motor right understand motor so motor will get the signal that means the supply and it will start rotating to open the door so here actuator get the signal or control command from uh, controller and it, it executes it so that's what an actuator basically a motor is an actuator basically or you can consider a valve right in a flow say for example uh, control in a, in in a, in a fluid control system or in a yeah in a fluid control system 
when you control a flow fluid in a tank or something right say the sensor detects that you have a tank or something like this and you have an ultrasonic sensor for example and the sensor detects that level of the liquid is the below the desired limit or the minimum then it will send a signal to microcontroller and the microcontroller will turn on the valve so the valve is an actuator so do you, do you understand the use of actuator so the actuator will enable the flow of water to go into the tank so i cannot draw that exact symbol with this one So the valve will enable the flow or it will disable the flow of liquid to the tank based on the command from microcontroller. If the microcontroller switches it on, it will allow the flow. If it, it, if it close the valve, it will block the flow. That's it. But uh, see, using microcontroller, we can automate a process, right? As I told you, you understand this. But we have some issues, so that's what I'm going to discuss. So, yeah. so using microcontrollers for automating the industrial processes as following programs. So I'm not saying programming is hard, but a bit complicated, right? Because and nowadays, some say most of the courses are offering those. Like even when you learn an electrical course, you are learning programming these days. So if you are learning electronics, normally you learn like, uh, programming because you need it to work with microcontroller. But normally a person who is, has a good skill in electrical stuff or electrical, he may not have good understanding of programming. So if you want to un automate the, his plan, but he will have the clear understanding of the work of the task or requirement of the process, but he may not be able to program it well. So he can learn it, but that will be complicated. That's one drawback. Then the second one, all microcontrollers cannot withstand industrial environments. That means the, uh, the industrial environments are not similar to our normal environment. The temperature, humidity, and also the, they will be different. They will be dusty and dirt. And also in some industrial environment, we can see continuous vibration. So some small microcontrollers cannot withstand. That environment, so we can't use it for long time. And the other one is limited number of inputs and outputs. Say, if you are familiar with Arduino or other microcontrollers, you know they have some limited number of inputs and outputs. You cannot increase them normally. So these are some drawbacks. Say, you have designed a plant with particular number of inputs and outputs, but now you are going to expand the process with some other additional inputs and some additional outputs. So in that case you can't do anything if you have already occupied all the inputs and outputs. So, as a solution for these three drawbacks only, we are going for PLC. Right? Or we call it programmable logic controller. Sorry, I will, I will cut this and I will rewrite. P L Uh, sorry about my poor handwriting. So, so we have these drawbacks with the microcontrollers. That's why we are going for PLC to automate industrial processes, right? Or we call it programmable logic controller or PLC. No. Okay. Now, can you tell me what is a PLC then? So now I told you. We have these problems with typical microcontrollers, like they have complicated programming languages, and also they cannot withstand in the industrial environment, in in industrial temperature or humidity, in that dusty, dirty, vibrative environments. But uh, and also the these microprocessors have or sorry controllers have limited number of inputs and outputs. So as a solution or to overcome this issue. We are coming coming up with a solution PLC program for logic control. So basically, PLC also a microcontroller which is designed for specific which is designed specific specifically for 
industrial process that means that will be able to uh, so i will go from here will to withstand in the industrial environment in that temperature and in that rugged environment or in that rough environment it will long last and the second one its programming language is easy than the other programming languages and also it will have the keep the capability of increasing the number of inputs and outputs but basically it's also a microcontroller or a computer basically which will which is specifically or specially designed for industry and computers okay so can you read this a programmable logic controller plc is a special form of microprocessor based controller microprocessor based controller means it's a microcontroller or computer that uses programmable memory to store instructions and to implement functions such as logic sequencing timing counting and arithmetic in order to control machines and processes so all these things so you can see uh, that uses you can come here that uses the programmable memory to store instructions or programs instructions and to implement functions such as logic sequencing timing counting these things will be done by all the microcontrollers but what makes plc special means say special form of microcontroller they are saying in order to control machines and processes that means we are going for industries so it is specifically designed for controlling industrial processes i cannot write it clearly on this with windows sorry about it fine so this definition i directly took from what book so the so basically if you want to say like as i told you i told you, you know you should be able to define on your own language so, so if you want to tell so if i want to tell what a, what a plc is plc is a special form of microcontroller a specific micro microcontroller designed to control industrial processes basically i don't have to tell these logic sequencing stuff. because if you refer the books they will talk lots of stuff see so this is okay but this is a very basic one a programmable logic controller is an industrial grade computer that is capable of being programmed to perform control functions so see also they are mentioning this is the main but if you go for this definition this is too complicated and i took all of these from books programmable logic controllers also called programmable controllers or plcs are solid state members of the computer family using integrated circuits instead of electromechanical devices that means so i tell you know in the industry 2.0 so i will i am explaining this one electromechanical devices that means in the industry 2.0 after the second industrial revolution we were using electromechanical relays to automate the plants so initially plcs came as a replacement for them. that's why integrated circuit using integrated circuit instead of electromechanical device to implement control functions they are capable of storing instructions such as sequencing timing counting arithmetic data manipulation and communication to control industrial machines and processes these are some all the pictures you see here are different plc is from different brands or different types so this is from mitsubishi really this is from schneider and this is from siemens and this is from abb this is omron and there are different models so not models different brands in each brands there are lots of models right okay. now i will go for go to the next slide advantages of the plc so basically why did why did we go for plc we had some problem with when we automate the industries with the uh, typical microcontrollers we had some problems right we to overcome that so that means those problems will be solved that's the main advantage right that you come here rugged design rugged design can withstand industrial environments right 
programming is easy. Input output IO in the sense I mean the input output expansion. So these three were the problem for the pre, pre typical microcontrollers. Now we have overcome that one. Other than that, installation, wiring, and modifications are easy. That means that's the advantages of automation using microcontroller also. Let's say. If you are if you are if you are using mechanic electromechanical relays to automate. Uh, that will be a bit complicated because all the logics will be created with a circuit, with a wiring. So it's lots of wiring wires. It will be complicated, and if you want to modify the logic, again you have to rewire. So that's difficult for using. That's that's difficult for using the relays for that. But when it comes to PLC installation, is very simple. You just have to connect the inputs and outputs with the PLC, and all the logics will be. Created using program and also the communication capabilities. So that means PLC can communicate with other devices. So specifically, we are designing for that purpose. So they have more communication capabilities, and also they are easier to troubleshoot compared to other systems because it is very easy to locate the fault on a PLC based on automated system compared to relay based system. So these three are. Especially compared with relay-based system, these three advantages are compared to microcontroller-based system. 